deprivation of life from beings who have a right to their own life. We have taken a jungle fowl in the case of the chickens and a wild turkey in the case of the domesticated turkey and we have bred and bred and bred made into these birds over and over again so that they will exhibit certain specific production traits at the expense of the well-being of the animal or the species. Now if you want to have red cattle, all you do is select cattle to go into your herd to mate which are red. And Pigs today have been genetically altered to grow fast and to grow large and they're usually slaughtered at about 220 pounds at six months of age, which is a very young animal. Here at Farm Sanctuary, we have pigs that are several years old, and of course we don't kill them here, so they've continued to grow. These animals are so big, their feet can barely support their bodies. By manipulating these animals genetically, the livestock in industry is also creating problems. And these are problems that these animals obviously have to live with and suffer as a result of. I'd like to talk about the three most important traits that we have to select for in beef cattle. How productivity. How many calves does she turn out? How heavy are the calves at weaning time? Now the next most important thing is rate of gain. We're very impressed with rate of gain as the second most important trait that we select for. After all, it's pounds of beef we're in the business to sell. And then third is carcass merit. Not so much whether it's got a full rump or not, but how fat it is. Whether it's fat enough for the trade, and whether the carcass is big enough or small enough for the particular trade. So here are the three traits that we're very interested for. There isn't much left after you've selected for these three uh, types of traits in a performance. The group that cloned Dolly before that engineered a sheep called Tracy. And Ron James, the owner of Protein Pharmaceuticals, who owns the patents on this group of animals, basically said two things in a debate with me that I cannot forget. He said, one, sheep are just furry little factories producing specialized chemicals for us. And the second thing, the patent that they had was for a mammalian bioreactor. The cloning of Dolly, which had been based on killing something like 272 other Dollies that didn't work out right, which didn't make the news, this destroyer and this destructive science was positioned on the covers of magazines where Ian Wilmot, the scientist, and of course they hid the corporation that financed Ian Wilmot, the scientist stands face to face with Dolly and the caption was the creator and the created. This absolute cosmic confusion about who's the creator, what is creation, what is life, is an absolute disaster for the future of humanity. It is really possible to treat animals as fellow beings, as not, as was said during the Industrial Revolution and Scientific Revolution, inferior creatures over whom man must establish his empire. But really, as the Earth family, in which we are all in a democracy of life, the kind of knowledge that that takes is a very different kind of knowledge, because it's a knowledge that cannot be purely quantified. Life organizes itself. Life creates itself. Our relationship should be a relationship of compassion, which leads to a deeper science of complexity, self-organization, ecological understanding of what the animal is, and a science of respect and reverence for the other. require constant maintenance and repairs. Worn out parts must be replaced. In the human body, replacements are also necessary, and these replacements are supplied by the proteins in the food. The protein in your ration is plentiful. It is found particularly in eggs, cheese, meat, and milk. As long as you take these foods each day, you will receive plenty of the materials necessary for the repair of your body. If you fail to eat these four foods, repair will not take place and your body will resemble a damaged aircraft. Its value to you and One of the, the remarkable uh, thoughts of the 19th century was that uh, uh, the reason that British had prevailed in colonizing was because they were beef eaters. 
and that the savages, the, the, the people of color who were vegetable eaters, didn't have the strength. When mighty roast beef was the Englishman's food, it ennobled our hearts and enriched our blood. Our soldiers were brave and our coaches good. Oh, the roast beef of old England. Proper food is a weapon of war. Due to vast shipments of food to our fighting men overseas and to our allies, In European cultures, meat became something that people wanted to eat every day. And this happened because the rich and the royalty were eating meat every day. And everyone aspires to eat meat every day, but there was not that much meat available. But then people immigrated to the United States. And suddenly they were riding home saying, we eat meat three times a day. Anybody could eat meat in the United States. And of course you would desire it. It has such a status having to do with wealth and having to do with first world life and it creates this desire. If you compare domestic animals such as cows and chickens and pigs, I think it certainly is a custom that those are the animals that we eat. We do not eat dog in this part of the world, not that I'm aware of. And I think that's because we have deemed to see dogs or cats as our friends and you don't want to eat your friends. On larger scale production, such as what we have here, we don't necessarily have very strong personal feelings towards the individual chicken. And so you do remain somewhat more detached. However, that doesn't mean that you are not concerned about their welfare. I remember going to a chicken farm one time where they were raising battery-caged laying hens. And they would send them off by the tens of thousands. The truck would come and take them off to the slaughterhouse. But one time a chicken got out, and this chicken was running around the farmer's house. And that farmer said that, you know, her heart got soft and she started feeding the chicken. And so this chicken became sort of a pet of hers because, again, this was an individual animal that she could identify with. When they're not known as individuals, I think the cruelty becomes normalized and, and the death becomes a mortality rate. And there are certain mortality rates which are considered acceptable. And instead of looking at those as individual animals who have died, they're looking at them as a percentage of the production units that are no longer productive. 